This isn't a sewage drain in some forgotten corner of some Indian city. This is the Yamuna, once called the river of life. Today, it's Delhi's biggest open sewer. Every winter, it even looks like snow. Thick white foam floating on the surface. But what you're seeing isn't snow. It's a toxic cocktail of ammonia, phosphates and untreated sewage. For more than 30 years, governments have promised to clean this river. More than 8,000 crore rupees spent, dozens of action plans, yet the Central Pollution Control Board admits there has been no real improvement since the 1990s. The river enters Delhi at Palla with 4.4 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen, just below the CPCB's limit of 5 milligrams per liter or more. But just 22 kilometers later, at Asgarpur, where it exits the city, oxygen levels drop to barely 0.9 milligrams per liter. Biologically, dead. And here's the paradox. Even in this state, the Yamuna still makes up for about 40% of Delhi's raw water supply. If 8,000 crores, dozens of action plans, and 30 plus years of promises couldn't clean Delhi's lifeline, what's really happening here? And more importantly, can it ever be fixed? I'm your host, Lavanya, and this is The Climate Brief. Today, we're diving into the Yamuna paradox. How a river worshipped in mythology became a toxic drain in India's capital city and why decades of cleanup plans have failed. start with the basics. How bad is Yamuna's water really? This is what the numbers tell us about what the quality of Yamuna's water is in Delhi. At ITO Bridge, fecal bacteria levels hit 92 lakh units per 100 ml. The safe limit? 2,500 units. That's over 4,000 times higher than the permissible limit. Biochemical oxygen demand. That measures how much organic pollution is choking the river has reached 127 milligrams per liter at some monitoring points. The safe limit is 3 milligrams per liter. We are talking about pollution levels 42 times higher than what's considered acceptable. Ammonia levels, they regularly cross 5 parts per million. Safe limit is just 0.5. When ammonia levels spike, which they do regularly, water treatment plants literally have to shut down. 20 million people suddenly depend on emergency tankers. You don't need to be an expert to know that this is bad. Really bad. But why is this happening? Delhi may be a victim, but it is also the culprit. Delhi's Yamuna stretch is just 52 kilometers long. That's barely 3.7% of the river's total 1,370 kilometer journey. But this tiny stretch is responsible for 76% of the entire river's pollution. Wow! Every single day, Delhi produces 3,596 million litres of sewage. To put that in perspective, that is enough to fill 1,438 Olympic swimming pools daily. Now, Delhi has 37 sewage treatment plants with a total capacity of 3,474 million litres. On paper, that should be enough. But here's where the system collapses. Only 2,955 million litres actually get treated. That leaves 641 million litres of raw sewage flowing straight into the Yamuna every single day. The Najafgarh drain, this single channel carries 60% of Delhi's wastewater directly into the river. So this is where we are. But it's not a new problem or something that hasn't been spoken about. It's a problem we've known about for decades. And in fact, we've spent crores of rupees on trying to fix it. Then why haven't the decades of cleanup efforts made any difference? It's not like governments haven't tried. Since 1993, every single administration has promised to clean the Yamuna. Since the Yamuna Action Plan launched in 1993, an estimated 8,000 crore rupees have been spent on cleaning up the river in Delhi alone. But here's what the Central Pollution Control Board found. No improvement since the 1990s. The Yamuna stretch in Delhi continues to be among India's most polluted rivers. So where did 8,000 crore rupees disappear? Let's follow the money trail. 
Delhi built 37 sewage treatment plants with a capacity of 3,474 million litres. It sounds impressive on paper, but we dug a little deeper. 14 out of 37 treatment plants don't even meet basic quality standards set by Delhi's own Pollution Control Committee. That's nearly 40% of the infrastructure failing to do its job. And here is the most absurd part. Many plants that do work discharge their treated sewage back into open drains already carrying raw sewage. Treated water gets dirty again within meters of leaving the plant. The government's own auditor found that money was allocated but not properly utilised. The National Green Tribunal has issued dozens of orders and show cause notices. Nothing changes. So yes, the money trail is messy, but let's cut through the jargon. Why does this actually matter to you and me? The truth is, even if you've never touched the Yamuna, the Yamuna touches you every single day. As I mentioned earlier, 40% of Delhi's raw water supply comes straight from the Yamuna. Hence, when ammonia levels in the Yamuna spike, Delhi's water treatments literally have to shut down or reduce capacity. The safe ammonia limit for water treatment is 0.5 parts per million. But Yamuna regularly hits 5, sometimes 7 ppm. When that happens, the entire city depends on emergency tanker deliveries. However, the contamination doesn't stop at drinking water. Farmers along the Yamuna floodplains use this toxic water to irrigate crops. Spinach, coriander, mustard. A 2019 NEERI study found traces of heavy metals like lead, chromium and cadmium in vegetables sold in Delhi's mandis. Which means the river's poison doesn't just flow past you. It flows into the soil, into the vegetables that grow on that soil and eventually into you. Long-term exposure to this toxic cocktail? Cancer, neurological damage, liver and kidney failure. And then there's the air you breathe. During winter, that thick white foam you saw at the beginning, it evaporates and mixes with Delhi's already toxic air. Ammonia and phosphates become part of the smog that chokes the city. And I don't think I need to tell you about what happens next. Now, there are other cities that have faced this exact same problem. And they've actually solved it. So the question isn't whether it can be done, it's why Delhi keeps failing when others have succeeded. Believe it or not, Delhi isn't the first one to face this crisis. In the 1950s, the River Thames in London was officially declared biologically dead. Zero oxygen, no fish, no aquatic life. Pretty much the Yamuna of its time. But today, the Thames supports 125 species of fish, including dolphins and seals. People even host marathons in it. So, what changed? London built a 4.5 billion pound super sewer, the Thames Tideway Tunnel. 25 kilometers of underground infrastructure designed to capture 95% of untreated sewage overflows. Paris banned swimming in the Seine for over 100 years due to pollution. In 2024, they hosted Olympic swimming and triathlon events in the same river. How? A 1.4 billion euro investment in upgraded treatment facilities and massive underground storage tanks to prevent overflow during heavy rains. But you don't need to look to Europe. Right here, in India, cities have pulled off the impossible. Kham in Aurangabad is a great revival story from recent times. For years, the Kham River had been reduced to little more than a dirty, foul-smelling drain, a far cry from the lifeline it once was. But today, it has transformed from a polluted, dying water body back into a thriving ecosystem thanks to the efforts of the government and the community. If you want to hear Kham's story, let us know in the comments below. And if this video gave you a new perspective, like it and share it. And subscribe to The Climate Brief for more stories that shape your future. We'll see you next week.